so welcome to this session so today we will be learning about bucket sort and uh, we'll see again the overview regarding radix sort what is radix so let's see that what does this video says uh, this animation so algorithm is only used to sort numbers only numbers can be sort no alphabets can be sort using this sorting technique then we sort the numbers from least significant digit to the most significant digits we use counting sort as the subroutine to sort we have we have already seen in previous videos that uh, uh, we have counting sort and how to do counting sort we need to count the number of the frequency of elements and then we can create a sum array and after creating a sum array we can uh, Uh, go to the indexes of that sum array, and we can locate our elements. At last, our elements will be sorted. So, uh, what we'll be doing, what we will be doing here, we will be using radix counting sort as a subroutine. As a, uh, we will, we will be calling counting sort in radix sort. So, let's see that. So, these are some important points now. consider this input array this is our example which will be using to to sort using radix sort so these are the these are the numbers 170 45 75 and then 90 802 and uh, 24 and 2 and 66 in this the important thing is uh we need to find out the actually the maximum number the largest number so that uh we can reach that many radices okay so we have to reach that many radix what is a radix radix is a base that is ones place and then tens place tens place is also because we are using a decimal number so radix radix of decimal number is 10 or the base of decimal number is 10 what is 10 uh the element at unit place then element at tens place and element at hundreds place how how and where we will stop we'll see the largest element that is 802 it have only three digits in it so we'll do this three times if there is a four digit number then we will do this four times okay so let's see uh, first consider the numbers at one space that is 6 2 then uh, then we have uh, 0 5 5 0 2 and 2 so all the elements at one place so these are the these are the all elements at one this is radix sort okay so after considering this we will sort the numbers at unit place only ones place only okay so what are those numbers zero zero will come here then what is a number greater than zero what is a number greater than zero that is 2 so 2 will come okay there is one more zero and this will come here at the second position why because uh, uh, this number is smaller than the first number but uh, in a chronological order this number comes first in this array so will not we will note this down on the first position and then the second position with zero is there any other zero no is there any other one no is uh, then next will be 2 so there is next two that is 802 so we'll store it here then we have next two at unit place that is two we'll store it here and after two we don't have any number 3 at unit place so next number is 4 so we'll store this 24 at this place we are sorting according to the unit place but we are taking the taking taking this whole number this number completely okay so we are storing it at its position then we have 45 75 and 66 so the unit places are sorted only till now unit places the number at unit places get sort sorted at at this step okay what is the next step we will consider all the numbers at all the numbers at tens place that is 7 9 0 and here we have 0 then 2 then 4 then 7 and then 6 these are the numbers at tens place okay so uh, there is a message written in this that uh, observe that 
170 has come before 90 this is because it appeared before in the original list so 170 is uh, before 90 in original list that's why we have written like this okay so let's see what is the next step now consider the elements at tens place and now we will sort these elements so what is the smallest element at tens place that is 0 0 and uh, that's these two are the smallest here we have zero and here also we have zero but this comes first in this array so this will be stored at first position then this comes after this so this will be uh, stored here now uh, we have uh, what is the next highest number next uh, a higher number than the zero that is uh, two so 24 will be stored here then 45 is a higher number than two so two and four uh, will be compared then seven is higher than sorry then six is higher so six will get stored here after that seven is higher but this seven comes first so this number will be stored here first and then 75 and then we have nine okay so this is uh, at sec at uh, second step now the digits at hundreds place so these all are the digits so at 100 place we have 0 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 at 100 place 100 place only at the third digit the third digit so we'll be sorting according to third digit but we'll be storing the whole uh, complete number on the next uh, uh, next array okay we'll be replacing this in the same array we are not taking any additional array uh, just to show you i have taken three different uh, lines but uh, will be taking the same array and will be replacing these numbers okay so uh, what is the smallest number here zero so zero will be at uh, this whole this complete number will be stored at first position then we have second zero this will be stored here then we have third zero this will be stored here fourth zero this will be stored here then we have one oh there is more there are more zeros so here we have zero at this place will this will be stored zero at this place this will be stored here then we have one one will be stored here and last is eight eight will be stored here so this is now our array is sorted we can see it is from smallest to largest okay now we'll see its algorithm that is very simple let's see this one i am directly um, explaining you the code what is the code so what we will be doing here, we'll be finding out the maximum number in an array. So we'll be finding out the maximum number in an array. So uh, after finding the maximum number, we'll be running this loop maximum divided by exponential that is multiplied by 10. We have already seen that if I if I multiply this work with the 10, what will happen? What will happen? Uh, this will get divided this uh, maximum 802 will get divided by 10 and it will uh, give us some quotient so it will run only till this quotient is greater than zero that we have already seen in the previous video so that is radix sort now we'll be seeing bucket sort now we will be seeing the example of bubble sort let's see that so in this sorting algorithm, buckets are created to put elements into them. There will be different buckets created for different elements. So then we apply some sorting algorithm like insertion sort, uh, insertion sort to sort each element in the bucket. And finally, we take out and join them to get sorted array. So these are some important points. Then Consider this input array. These are the elements. So total number of elements are 10. So we can create 10 buckets. We can create 10 buckets. So these are the buckets on the uh, left side. So these are 10 buckets starting from 0 to 9. Now insert A of i into the bucket that is n into r. That means if, uh, let's see, the, see it with the example. If the element is 7, 8, so let's say it's 78, it will get stored at bucket position of this 0 0.78. So this will get stored here at 78. All the elements 
starting from seven like this will get stored here, and uh, all the elements from start starting from seven will get stored at this location by using pointers or by using linked lists. Okay, so we'll see what is the next point that is uh zero point seven one seven. So this is one. So one uh, this element will get stored at uh, this bucket number one. One seven starting from one. All the elements that are starting from one, like twelve point point one two, will get stored here. Okay, by creating a linked list. Then three nine uh, is starting from three, so it will get stored at third position. Then we can say uh, this is twenty six, so this will get stored here. Then seventy two already have a seven here, so this will get stored here. By using linked list, then nine will get stored here at ninth position. Then we have twenty one. It will get stored at two position. We already have one element, so uh, the pointer will be created for the linked list. Then we have twelve. So it is starting from one. So it is uh, it it will get stored at one bucket. Then we have point two three, so it will get stored at this bucket. Okay. Now we have six eight, so there is no other element in six, so it will get stored here. Okay. Now uh, sort each bucket individually. We need to sort buckets first. So uh, first bucket is already sorted. We need to sort second bucket. So second but bucket will get sorted, and then. uh this is this is one element that is already sorted this is also one element that is all already sorted then we have two elements here and we need to sort this bucket and at last we have this element and this is all also already sorted now we can put it one by one by copying the elements from the buckets to our original array we can see all the elements are getting copied one by one so this element will come here okay. so this is bucket sort now uh, you can see the slide sort the following elements in ascending order using bucket sort so we have already seen what is bucket sort there is one more example related to that let's see this one these are the elements create an empty bucket of size n okay and next step is add each input element to appropriate appropriate bucket as the bucket i holds the value in half open interval that is i into 10 ao ao phi should be greater than uh, or equals to i into 10 what is i let's say uh, I'll, i'll tell you with the help of example then it should also be less than i plus 1 into 10 I plus one into ten. That is nothing but the number from. Uh, let's say numbers are. Uh, you can see these are numbers. So thirty uh, will be stored at a of i is thirty. Let's say thirty. And uh, what will be i into ten? That will be. Uh, it, it, it's at four position. So this is the bucket size actually, not the element index. So elements from range ten to twenty. 10 to 20 that will be uh, 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 and uh, less than actually 20 so less than 20 here it is written 20 and in this side it is multiple of 10 that is 1 into 10 so it should be equal to 10 the elements could be 10 to 19 and next time if uh, i is 2 at at second position we can store the elements from 20 to 30 then at third position if i is 30 then this element can be stored in position from 30 to 40 so this is the idea behind it sort each bucket q with the insertion sort then merge all the buckets together in order so this is our merge sort the run time complexity is uh, this okay order of n plus n so it 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 will become order of n so these are the elements and let's see uh, what is the example so, so this this many buckets we have created we have created this many buckets 
and uh, what will do because uh, this element is less than uh, 50 and it's greater than or equals to 30 so this will get stored at 40th position okay i'll tell you that again the same thing that we discussed in this uh, this i'll explain it to you on the board okay let's see the example first so if these are the elements these are the elements and i want to store it i'll put it into a bucket this element at fourth position because it is starting from 4 so all the elements greater than or equals to 30 and less than 50 will get stored here greater than 30 and less than 40 will get uh, less than 50 will get stored here greater than 40 and less than 50 sorry greater than 40 and less than 50 all the elements ranging from these 10 elements then all the elements from 90 to 100 including 90 but not including 100 so it, these elements will get stored here then all the elements from 20 to 30 will get stored here but 30 will not be included then all the elements from 30 to 40 but 40 will not be included will get stored here and uh, you can see the example 12 will get stored here because it is starting from 1 all the elements from 10 to 19 will get stored here then all the elements from uh, 30 to 40 will get stored here at third position all the elements from uh, 60 to 59 will get stored here then all the elements from 90 to 99 will get stored here and uh, now we can sort the each bucket separately using insertion sort so sort these and then merge all the buckets together so these elements are sorted now this is our bucket sort we have seen this that a of i is the element in array of i but i we are considering of uh, the bucket the i index is of the buckets okay let's say element at one one position which element will get stored at one position at one bucket at bucket number 1 this is the bucket in bucket sort so which element will get stored here so that is given here that is equals to i into 10 so element should be all the elements less than uh, greater than or equals to i into 10 so which element will get stored at the bucket number 1 that we have uh, that we know that is 1 into 1 into 10 that is 10 so it should be equals to 10 or greater than 10 and the other condition is it should be less than it should be less than i plus 1 into 10 that is 2 i plus 1 is 2 so it should be less than 2 and what uh, multiplied by 10 so that should be the element should be any element any element that is less than 20 will get stored at bucket number 1 so 10 will store get stored here then 11 will get stored here 12 it will get uh, stored here and up to uh, 20 all the elements uh, less than 20 19 will get stored here uh, this is how it will work and in in next bucket we can see now new i will be uh, this will be uh, 2 so at at second bucket which uh, what are the elements that can be stored in the second bucket so that are i into 10 that i into 2 sorry i into 10 so 2 into 10 is 20 so all the elements greater than or equals to 20 and less than i plus 1 that is 2 now 2 now so that is 3 into 10 that is 30 so all the elements equals to 20 or greater than 20 but less than 30 will get stored what are those elements so the, those are 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 26 and then we have 27 28 and 29 these elements will get stored at second bucket okay so this one is the algorithm for uh, bucket sort this one is the algorithm of bucket sort what does it says so it says that uh, we need a for loop 
to insert the elements into bucket so we already know it is a mode of 10 so mode of 10 it will give us the uh, remainder and then uh, we'll take the for loop once more and sort the bucket bi with insertion sort so all the buckets at uh, 0 1 2 position get uh, writing that together this is the algorithm and in a expansion way we will be seeing it in the lab view okay this is about all about bucket sort that is some new topic using dynamic programming so there are some techniques that could make algorithm work faster what are those techniques we have already discussed one technique that is divide and conquer technique next technique is dynamic programming dynamic program how it is different from divide and conquer i'll tell you the difference and there are more techniques uh, that can make our algorithm work faster like uh, greedy algorithms are there then uh, dynamic programming we have already known no dynamic programming is there then divide and conquer is there greedy programming uh, greedy uh, approach is there then we have uh, approach called randomization we have also seen that randomization uh we have seen in case of quick sort if we use a random pivot there are very few chances that will make a matrix that is only symmetric to the left side or the right side that is making us a worse case so it will prevent us from making this case so that is also the technique to make algorithm work fast there are some uh, the the these techniques can be applied on multiple algorithms but there are some techniques like uh, stressens matrix based on some um, developer's name that is stressen a matrix can be multiplied in lesser time other than n cube because there will be three loops in uh, multiplying each matrix in an in an program but uh, stressens is a name of the scientist who developed this technique which shows us that lesser time could be taken to multiply the elements but the things will get complex in that now a today's topic that is part of dynamic programming is lcs that is longest common subsequence longest common subsequence okay what is lcs that will discuss uh, that is we need to find we have two strings if we have two strings given two strings find the length of longest sequence present in both of them so there are two sequences given or two strings given so if two sequences are given we need to find longest sub sequence longest sub sequence present in that longest sub sequence present in these two sequences okay that is lcs longest common sub sequence okay so two sequences are given we need to find the, the longest common sub sequence present in this what is a sub sequence what is a sub sequence so sub sequence is a sequence that appears in the same relative order but not necessarily contiguous so it may it cannot be it may or may not be contiguous so the, all the elements together cannot be Uh, i'll i'll give you one example so what is the uh longest co common sub sequence in these two strings these two sequences a b c d e f g this is one sequence and there is another sequence called a b x d f and g so here we have e here we do not have e here we have c and d here we have only d okay these are the two sequence sequence 1 and sequence 2 a b c d e f g and a b x d f and g these are the two sequences what is the longest common sub sequence in it so it is a b then d f g this is the longest common sub sequence there is no sequence common uh, greater than this so this is the lcs of this term so we are starting from 
this side we are not going to that side first okay we are going to uh, we are going to the right side so after matching the first element we are going to the right side we are not coming backward so a matches a b matches b there is no match between these two then d matches b then we have f matches f and g matches g so this is the longest common subsequence but not necessarily uh, contiguous because there is this element so this is not contiguous two elements are common here and then uh, uh one element is common here then these two elements are common in here so this is the longest common subsequence so this is easy to find in a smaller length sequences but uh, we need to create the algorithm using dynamic programming and it will tell us how to uh, find out longer longest common subsequence in bigger sequences that is uh, helped in using uh, dna reports and uh, all the matching patterns so this will be very helpful there longest common subsequence will be helpful in that okay now we'll see there will be two cases there will be two cases uh, if we try to match any sequences that is that are actually uh, if the last element if the last element matches and if the all last element do not match so if last element of sequence get matched so if it matches and if it do not match if we try to match two sequences so what will happen there will be two cases last element will match and last element will not match do not match last element will not match in that case i'll tell you how it is uh, given here let's say this is the there are two sequences and these two last elements do not match then what are the elements left to match if there are n elements in this list n elements in this list what are the elements that are left to match so that will be n minus 1 in this and n minus 1 in this because last two do not match if they do not if they match sorry okay if they match then what are the elements left because we cannot match it again so if there are m and n m elements so that will be how many elements will be left m minus 1 so how many element will be left in this that will be n minus 1 so this is one sequence this is sequence 2 if the last element match how many elements again listen to uh, listen to it again carefully how many elements will be left these many element that is m minus 1 and uh, in this how many elements will be left n minus 1 okay so you need to remember it for your algorithm algorithm will be doing in the next class you need to remember this one that that uh, if the elements match if the last element match then what will happen then we'll take these elements m minus 1 and l2 that is sequence of n minus 1 okay so first case is when the last element matches so many elements will be left this these elements will be left so these are the index that will be using in our array indexes indexes of arrays m minus 1 and n minus 1 okay what if the last character do not match then what are the indexes then what will happen okay these these will be the indexes the character of uh, which do not match is uh, from the second uh, from the first sublist so this is there will be two cases again so this is let's say l1 array and this is l2 array and we try to match this element with this one so if this do not match what will happen so m minus 12 one elements will be left here but this can be matched with all the other elements so total all the elements are uh, left in this case and the reverse is also possible that if the elements from lower list do not match if the elements from lower list do not match then what will happen all the elements for, from the first sub list and n minus 1 elements from the second sublist here we have m 
lengths could could be different that's why i have written m and n okay if the elements do not match what will happen there could be two cases again what what are two cases uh, the last element do not match then uh, we are trying to match it from the first to second so if this do not match then this will be subtracted and all the elements for from this will be considered but if we are doing reverse in a reverse order you know we are trying to match l2 with l1 what will happen then the n minus l n minus 1 element will be left here and all the elements of this n will be left here so that's why we have written these indexes that's why we have written these indexes okay so you need to remember these indexes while doing uh, our algorithm and exam i'll tell you what is this again okay first consider what is dynamic programming in dynamic program in uh, in recursion what is the problem in recursion so we have done all the all the programs with recursion now what is the problem with recursion uh, we'll see the problem here uh, if we call a algorithm recursively recursively means uh, the function will keep on calling itself until the problem is solved and will divide it into sub problems so uh, if the last element matches there is no problem in that but if they do not match what will happen then that is the problem so we need to find out what will happen then and how can we solve the problem so consider these two sub strings consider these two sub strings you can see all the elements are not matching so we'll we will try to match it from uh, the last element so so there we have t and here we have x so there will be two cases if we are trying from this side as well as if we are trying from this side so that is the two cases i have already told you uh, we can try it from the l1 or l2 these are two sequences so if we are trying to match it from this side then this element will be considered okay the same thing i am going to explain it again so uh, there will be two things that will be explained in this concept you can see if we are trying to explain or uh, trying to trying to match it from this side or we are trying to match it from that side so that will be considered here so we will call lcs again and if this if we are trying to match it from this side and element do not match then what will happen how many elements will left to find a longest common subset so this element will not be there because this do not match but all the elements from that side all the elements from this side okay they are matching they are there okay then on right side what will happen lcs will be called again uh, if we are trying to match it from this side then what will happen all the elements from this side will be there but the x will not be there because this does not match this t so there will be one less element in this string understand this again uh, we can we can try to match from this side to this side or from that side to this side if we are trying to match it from this side this will be subtracted because this is not matching any element but we have not checked from this side so these all elements will be there so that's what i have written here that's what i have written here there will be three elements here t will not be there and x y z x will be there as it is because we are still to consider this okay and if we consider this then what will happen all the elements from this side will be there but the last element will not be there okay then uh, if we continue this what will happen again there will be two cases and if i call it as lcs again if i call the lcs again that is longest common sub sequence and if i call it recursively what will happen we'll try to match y with all these elements if last elements do not match last element do not match what will happen we are trying from this side to that side then what will happen there will be only two elements left this will get subtracted and now we'll try to match it from this side and all the elements will be there but if we we are trying to match from this side the second one what will happen then lcs will be called again and 
this element will get subtracted so elements will be will look like this a x y a x y and then a y z a y z so these are the elements and if we try to solve this one also lcs here this is a recursion tree actually of recursively calling the same problem again and again so we try to match this and this from this side from 1 to 2 so if we are trying to match from this side then t is not matching so we'll subtract t out of the sequence but we have not tried this that side so we'll write it as it is so a by z is written as it is and uh, other cases we try to match from 2 to 1 from that side to this side now we can see z is not matching the last element so we'll uh, get z out of this sequence okay then what will happen lcs will be called again lcs will be called again uh, for for uh, these two elements and all these elements okay we can see what we can see here this problem is common in order to solve this problem in order to find a longest common subsequence in these two and these two this is same this is overlapping so in recursion what is the problem why we are using dynamic programming approach in dynamic programming approach these steps will not be repeated but in recursion these problems will be solved recursively again and again so the wastage of time is there that's why we are using dynamic programming approach that's why we are using dynamic programming approach so that we will be seeing in the next class we will also see what is lcs again with the help of example and how to find a longest common subsequence in two given sequences so you can you can also take example of factorial uh, in factorial also the same thing happens if you call it recursively if you call it recursively same thing happens in factorial also so if you want to solve the factorial of 5 uh, factorial of 5 what will happen what will happen in that case hold on factorial is calculated like this in order to calculate a factorial of 5 you will be solving factorial of 4 and factorial of 3 and in order to solve the factorial of uh, factorial of 4 you need to solve the factorial of 3 and factorial of 2 and in order to solve the factorial of 3 you will be using factorial of 2 and factorial of 1 that is how recursion works i'll tell you with the example also so this is nothing but uh, factorial of n minus 1 okay and uh, in order to solve this these will be recursion call this this recursion calls will be made and you can see that this is a common problem so you have to solve the factorial of 2 two times by using a recursive method and factorial of 3 two times there could be more times if we draw the com complete tree so there will be more time in that so that is why we will be using dynamic programming actually in order to solve this 5 factorial you can see here we need to count f n of uh if factorial of n and then you want to find n into fact of n minus 1 this is all recursive uh, factorial is done n into fact of n minus 1 so this is 4 and n minus 1 is 3 so this is 3 and n minus 1 is 2 this is 2 and n minus 1 is 1 so there are multiple uh, overlapping sub problems that will be solved again and again in recursion that could be avoided in dynamic programming and that's it for today